started. Okay, I'm gonna start recording now. All right, so good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and I, um, you can go ahead and start with your presentation. God bless everybody that came on uh, this evening. There you go. All right, so, um, my topic today is, um, so I did, last night I thought about the topic and then literally for the past 20 minutes before this call, it was just dropped into my spirit where to go with this. So, um, so yeah, let's get started. So, um, I know on the flyer, Miss uh, Kim had something um, about the Forex queen. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Um, but I said to myself, I said, you know, before we can even talk about money and manifesting money, we first have to go to the inner child, right? Um, and what I'm really going to share to you is based on my own revelations and things that have been um, um, revealed to me over the past couple of weeks. And um, it may go over some people's heads, and that's fine, um, because you can always come back to it when you are ready for this information. So um, I think for me... One of the interesting things about my journey is that I have along the way have heard so many things that I may not have understood at the time. I may have intellectualized it, understood it from that perspective, but until you actually experience something from for yourself, you have no idea what is really being said. Um, and... I'm grateful for that because when the revelation does hit, um, man, it's a level of enlightenment that that you receive, which is a blessing. Before money and abundance, there is the inner child that you must come from. See, my inner child, she always presented herself outside of me. She would project herself outward. I would see her like standing in my room or something like that. And I was able to have conversations. Um, and this went on for maybe about a year and a half. Um, so in a sense, she was still like on the surface in my mind. Now I can say that because I have a, diff a new perspective. Um, and it's just like, you know, all of the meditations that I've done over the past two years, um, in a sense, was everything, but also nothing at the same time. And the reason why I say that is it was everything because so much has been revealed to me from that connection um, of going within, um, grounding and mindfulness, um, which is also wonderful benefits. Um, it was also everything because it needed to represent and needed to be for me for the past two years. I, the reason why I say it was nothing is because I didn't understand the true connection that I experienced it for myself consciously maybe about two weeks ago. So, you know, I thought, well, all right, well, maybe I wasn't ready. And also to really heal, you know, not to heal, but there's levels to it. Um, and for the past two years, I had only really been in a sense on some surface, but now I, I feel like I've, a new door has been opened. All right. So what are you saying, Nyla? So some of us, um, you know, have had struggles with moving forward, getting unstuck, breaking free. Why? Because something in your finger, your inner child. So 
one of the things that I've recently learned is that the inner child was never outside of me. You know, I, I didn't know where to find, and maybe this is not everyone else's experience, but I never knew where to find her. You know what I mean? I always heard, oh, go within, go within, but within where? Like, where do I find her? She's, again, she's only projected her me until about two weeks ago um, and meditation. Um, I realized that she resided in my heart space. So your money, your creativity, your everything dwells within inside your heart space. Um, also God dwells within source, whatever you choose to call. within where how what does that mean okay I get it intellectually but it was a different level so what ended up happening with me like I said in meditation I was realized that I needed to connect my conscious mind with my heart right right um and then I, things started to make more sense when I realized that you know your heart is really this source of everything in your body think about your veins your your arteries everything um stems from the heart like all it's like a tree so like in all of the branches out through your body so the heart fuels everything in your body so once I was able to connect my conscious mind all right so what does that mean what I what I did was I envisioned my mind my thoughts going down into my heart as if my heart had a mouth, eyes, ears, everything. So, right. So I took my, my consciousness out of my head and brought it down into my heart. And then who appeared? My inner child. And it was like a revelation. I was like, oh, you're here. Like you're here inside of me. And then I started to connect the dots. I say connect the dots, but really it was things that were revealed to me at that point. My inner child has been in my heart this whole time, right? My inner child is connected to my creativity, my manifestation and everything. That means that God must be there, right? I said, God, is inside here and then I can really connected the dots and I was just like God is the inner child the inner child that either builds the kingdom that you desire to create or destroys it so when you create you manifest so then I connected oh it's the trinity that's the trinity now we all know in order to manifest it has to be the trinity um I hope y'all are following me, but if not, maybe later. <laughs> um, so when you activate the Trinity within, then and only then can you manifest the life you truly desire. And I feel like that is a game changer in anyone's path once you really are able to connect to your inner child within, to the God within, your God within, right? Um, so stay in the heart space because if you don't, you have no control over you. What does that mean? When you're not inside of your heart space and operating from within your heart, you're being controlled by external forces. So unless you move, act, think, go in your day-to-day -day life from your heart space, think about it. Your heart is the center, it controls everything externally. So if you're not in your heart space internally, then externally you're being controlled by something else. Um, so you know, our inner child is the space within us where we reflect, ponder, contemplate past thoughts and feelings. So let the child in you speak on its behalf and uncover the truths that really lay behind who you really are. Um, 
that's where we have the power to feel safe, secure, and heal the wounds the way we really want to in order to live the lives that we want. So um, I feel like that is the end of this presentation. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Are, they, are there any questions? I don't have any questions, but I want to say confirmation um, because I always talk about, um, you know, like that Holy Trinity of manifestation, um, your thoughts, you know, combined with your emotions, then produces an action, which then produces a physical manifestation, right? And it can be in reverse. It can be your emotions produces a thoughts, which produces an action, which then produces a physical manifestation. So the Trinity is thoughts, emotions, actions, right? <laughs> which is going to equal manifestation. So thank you for that because that is exactly right on point um and i also say like even connecting your inner child with your um your heart space is powerful because i'm seeing like in numerology how you have like the number five in numerology and the number five in numerology is sitting like dead smack in the center of the birth chart but it's kind of like the embryo or the fetus, like that that child that's come, like all of the other numbers are engulfed by the, by the, um, the number five is in the center and all of the other numbers surround the number five. So it's still like that inner number, that heart chakra space, that number five is known for your heart chakra. So it's still that inner sacred space. So everything that you said is still having my, my mind, like connected all of the dots, the things that I relate to, right on point, um, confirmation. That's what I have to say. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, um, thanks for sharing. I, it made complete sense to me. However, I'm in the place you were referring to where I'm still going within and I don't know how to connect to my inner child. And so I guess what advice would you have for somebody going through that? Like I, I everything you explained made 100% sense. I'm just struggling to get there. And I know you said it eventually you got there as well but what what exactly did what steps did you take to get and there? so I understand what you're saying because I I struggled even though I would have interactions with my heart with my inner child I was just like well I don't even know how to make you happy I don't even know how to find you again are you going are you coming back or, you know where are you it wasn't until honestly I really did this meditation when in meditation I could connected because think about it when we go about our life what we are thinking um how do you quiet that you got to like find a way to turn it off I was able to turn it off by dropping my consciousness down into my heart space and then the lights turned on then my inner child was sitting there and I was just like oh, this is where you've been? And then from there, of course, my inner child began to reveal things to me that I didn't know, wouldn't have probably ever known had I been able to do it. So as far as steps, I mean, I don't, the only thing I can say, I did one thing. I took my conscious mind and I, and I, I, I saw it as if I took my brain and put it in my heart. And now my brain, you know, I, like I created like an eyes, a nose, a mouth in my heart, if that makes sense. Like if my heart now became, I made my heart the boss, not my mind. Yes, that makes complete sense. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Um, I just wanted to thank you because um, I texted you back last week because I was an absolute mess and I've been in a space of mess mentally and um, I keep being like put in a predicament like go with your heart go with your heart and I'm like that's what I've been doing so hearing you say that it was literally like you haven't been doing it at all and even last night when I went to sleep um, I put on a heart chakra meditation because I said clearly it's something wrong. Clearly I'm not going with my heart and doing like I remember Kamoy telling Kamoy saying in like 
a video like your heart is your true compass. And um, it just feels like, nope, I haven't been following it. So this was literally like spirit, spirit working through you saying, hey, Ashley, um, if you didn't get it, here's your here's your final message, because after that, you just missing the boat. So thank you. And thank you for even that explanation of that visualization, because that's how I meditate through visual. So being able to move my brain into my heart will and give it like a life, then it will take on what it needs to take on and guide me. So thank you. You're welcome. And, it, you know, it's so interesting because when I was talking to Miss Kim about this a couple of weeks ago, you know, it, it was brought back to my memory. I remember like I had gotten out of the hospital and you know, all these things. And I remember saying on one of these these meetings, like, I feel like I can't feel my heart. I feel like I don't feel anything. And then once I dropped into my heart space and that connection was made, Honestly, I cried because I was like, oh, I really haven't been paying you any attention. I really have been ignoring you because I didn't even know how to find you. So how could I ever have really tapped into my inner child if I didn't even know how to find my inner child to keep going back, to check in, to, to reside there, to be there? So, I mean, it was powerful for me. So, I mean, thank you for sharing that. I think um, I have a, well, I, I have a statement and I'm listening to everything that you're saying. It's, it's amazing. Um, I'm 54 years old and it took me probably until six years ago to really stop, think, you know, listen to my, listen to my heart. And I don't know. And I guess my question is, so listening to your own heart, I definitely have started doing that within six years. The inner child, I think for a lot of people, I know even for myself, you know, bringing that together is it takes dedication because a lot of times when you are finding your inner child, there's a lot of pain that comes with that. And so I think that for a person, it really takes a lot of dedication and really wanting to move past into another healthier way of living. Um, so I guess that was my statement. Um, I, I had a, a chance this morning to talk to my 12 year old granddaughter and she was having some issues about going to school. And I was talking to her. I said, you know, we talked about mindfulness before. I said, um, don't give your happiness away to other people, no matter what's going on around you. You know, you, you have to stay inside of yourself and you know make your day what you want to be want it to be so it's it's continuous I think it's a working we're dealing with friends we're dealing with everyday life so it's it's a balance that we really have to find for ourselves. um so that was what you you know everything you're on point thank you and thank you for sharing thank you Any other questions or statements, comments? Um, I uh, will add, and if anyone else wants to add, then um, you can come in. This is Kim. I have my um, picture off. But I think that it's a wonderful revelation that um, Ida, um, what she said brings into view the fact of consciousness. Your consciousness is ready to accept where uh, the truth is, right? And when your consciousness is ready, then it opens up to you. Um, oftentimes that we are going off of what we see, who, where, and when is mimicked, right? And the reason that we overlook this information that could be given through all different types of vehicles, we overlook it as because we've been used to and programmed to uh, look outside for gratifications. So even when that information has come to us, 
we don't hear it. A lot of times, even today, we're on um, and we've been at other places and we don't hear what people are saying to us, bad or good or indifferent. Um, I find myself explaining in a group on um, Clubhouse a couple of weeks ago, the reason why a lady was isolated for five years because someone said, um, isolation is not good. Isolation is good because it brings you to hear your own inner voice. You hear no other chitter chatter around you, which brings you into another level of consciousness because now you don't hear all of the strangers' voices, which, you know, is said biblically because we are um, people that want to mix and mingle. We tend to hear other voices and we don't take the time or believe that we have to take the time to be in isolation or quiet. We have to get up every day. Um, and do the same thing that we were programmed to do that is external, outside stimuli, right? And this is what keeps us from um, our, our consciousness changing. Because when you look at yourself, even from uh, the time when you were born up till now, there's been changes. There might be changes that you don't like, but the change that you don't like has to do with the choices that you have made. Um, the kingdom of God is within, you know? It's, it's there every day that we can read, but there's something about getting into that word or even to hear the words of truth that we can run from. And I say it for my own self because, um, yeah, when we talked about it, her, um, I, everyone that's on here except for a few, Kamoy and I um, and others, we have discussed these things. Um, but the, the part that keeps us from getting there is the fact that we don't want to um, sit down. Anyone could stop me and say you're wrong, but I'll tell you something. When you're going out um, partying, it's going to distract you from you will begin to retract yourself when you really want this. I'm, I'm telling you the truth because some people are, are saying what they don't have. And even in that group, a young man was telling her, this woman that, you know, she, it wasn't healthy to be isolated, but how are you gonna get to the truth of who you are if you do not separate yourself? And even God tells us to separate ourselves from amongst. Because if you don't, then you continue as the world. So you find other parts of you when you are not in the receptivity of others that are talking about something or another that keeps you from going within. We are distracted from our own growth. Okay, so I'm, I'm keeping the conversation going. Anybody else or we'll get ready to close down. <laughs> You know, I did a reading, um, I went live earlier and I did um, a poll with the elements. Um, and that was the same exact message, like bringing in balance and doing the shadow work, which is exactly what um, Nye was talking about, right? Yeah. So when she's talking about the inner child, she's talking about that shadow work, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and Ida said it perfectly, like that comes with pain. You understand what I'm saying? So that shadow work means that you got to go in and you got to face your disappointments. You got to face your trauma. You got to face the heartbreak. You got to face the rejection. You got to face the insecurities. You got to face everything that has caused you pain. Now, one of the things that I like to teach is you don't really know yourself until you know your shadow self. Because your shadow self is where all the gems lie. You understand what I'm saying? That inner child. That place where all of that trauma and bondage may be, once you get in there, you begin to unpack that stuff and free yourself, you are limitless. There is no love that you cannot conquer. There is no mountain that you cannot move. Because I'm going to tell you what I've learned about mastering your shadow side and moving mountains. Mountains are not moved by you physically doing them. Your mountains are moved by your emotions and your mental thoughts. All right, which produces your action, which then moves the mountains. So I think the world we are taught in reverse, physically do this and then this. No, that's not how this happens. Um, and I, I know Kim 
Prophetess, we talked about this at the top of the year. This year was all about change. It's a vibration of five, represents change. And I said at the top of the year, this is about mental and emotional chess. And the way that you do mental and emotional chess is your shadow work. Because this chess game is not a game externally. This is a game internally. This is a game internally. So if you are not discovering who you are, and, and I know exactly that feeling Nye is talking about, there's a space that you get to when you are reintroduced to who you are. You, you're, there, that, that space leaves you out of, there is, that's so pure, you cry, you can't, and, and, and I want to say this too, and through all of that, there's an immense feeling of love that you can't explain, you can't put into words. You know, you can't even express it. They just got to go in and feel that, right? And so my message is always this. You can't change other people. You can't be anybody else but you. Only person you can change is yourself. And the only person you can be is you. So embrace you. There is no perfect self without your imperfections. None, none. And as a matter of fact, I have gone to say, this is my phrase. The way to your perfection is through your imperfections. That's it. The way for you to get to your perfection is by your imperfections. That's it. And how do you get to your imperfections? And how do you deal with your perfections? That's your shadow work. That's it. Now is right. And, and, and then this is what I've learned too. And I don't know why I feel like I need to drop this, but spirit is safe to drop this. People are spinning in this energy. You have a lot of people that are not doing the shadow work and what they're doing is projecting. And if you are not aware of this projection, you especially if you're an empath, what you're going to do is take on somebody else's stuff and think it's your stuff when it's not your stuff, right? So I like what um, Ashley said. Wait a minute. I'm not checking in with my heart. I tell people all the time, allow your emotions to be indicators. Your emotions are not here to oppress you and keep you bound. They are indicators. Ask why. Instead of getting mad and feeling jealous, why am I jealous? Why am I mad? Why did that hurt my feelings? Wow, that's hurt. Why? When you begin to ask why, why leads to another why, which leads to another why, and then boof, an epiphany happens. And sometimes that epiphany is something as simple as you need to love yourself more and take a walk. It's not even that big sometimes. Sometimes it's just like a little bubble, right? But that little bubble, if you're not tapped in, you can walk around feeling tired. You can walk around feeling drained. You can walk around giving your attention and your energy to other things that nice and are distractions, right? And not tapping into your true self. So my thing is always this. You can't change anybody else but you. That's it. And the world don't change by me changing anybody else. The world changed by Kimoy changing. The world changes by Ashley changing, by Nye changes. Well, we all individually take on a responsibility for our own shadow work, that own inner child. That's when the world changes. That's it. And there's no way around that. What we can do is offer an extension of help by the way we treat others, by the way we treat ourselves. Being an example, being an example, you know, and I say this all the time. Um, my schedule has changed, so I haven't been able to really be on here every Tuesday like I, I normally was. But every time I stop in on Tuesday, I feel filled when I leave here. It's always like a right on time message. You understand? It's always like a right on time message. You know, so what I want to add is thank you, Nye, once again, right on time. And I'm going to pause my mic right here. You're welcome. And I, I'll just add, you mentioned um moving mountains when you get to the inner child um you know I, I realized also that you know when I know we've all heard it whether we've truly understood it or not co-create co-create with the universe co-create 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 right um once you tap into your heart space and you realize your inner child is there and that's the way the magic is. That's how you co-create. You co-create once you tap into that space. That's that's co-creating with the universe. It starts within. So yes, you can absolutely move mountains. Like that's when you 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 know you get out your your magic wand and you start doing things. You know, right in here. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah, I agree. So last year I did uh, shadow classes and I still have those um, if anyone needs them for sale. 
Um, this is part of the consciousness waking up. I believe that nothing is lost. Everything is found at the right time. Um, we've all been um, a part of each other's evolution. I love what I hear today. And so I want to add that there as well. Absolutely. And I think, I don't know, was it the a part of the shadow class where I did the Chiron? You did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Boy and I did yeah. a couple together. Yeah. Because that, that, um, okay. Mm -hmm. it, Cause that, um, that is directly, you know, we all have our own wheel, right? Our own things to overcome you know, um, my overcoming my own wheel in Chiron, you know, discovering self, you know, discovering my own value, my own self work. So, you know, I feel like this is just another cog in the wheel, you know, to get me to where I'm supposed to be. So, um, yeah, but I feel like this was a major cog, like, <laughs> you know, once you figure out how to connect to your heart space, I, I feel like game over now, you know, how, how can I be stopped? So. I would go as far as to see is that's when your freedom really comes in now, uh, because that's your compass. Yes. That's your compass, you know? Um, you know how they talk about your heart should be light as a feather? You know, we, we don't really get into that too much, but that's when you know you don't have to hold on to jealousy. You don't have to hold on to anxiety. You know, when you can really just, okay. I, I, one of the things that I've been paying attention to is manifesting in real times through my emotions, like checking into how I'm feeling emotionally and manifesting in real time via my emotions, right? And I can tell you, um, especially if you're an empath, try that. Mm -hmm. try waking up and declaring what your day is going to be like you know try watching your words and not formulating your sentences to cancel out the things you're asking for you know you know to go through fearful experiences you know I'm not saying that of this power and this gift Gift, right and I'm pretty sure everyone on here is tapped in and have a power a gift to help because we've chosen the space in this time before today you know we've all chosen the space and time to be here today to be reminded right and if you can tap in to yourself at a higher level and just vibrate at a higher level just by what you think in the morning you'll be pop you'll be surprised to see how just one thought can shift your day we, what I want to just leave you guys with today, and this is something I'm doing for myself because I'm walking through some of the most um, trying times in my experience in this moment, right? I'm not saying past moments because you all have those trying times, you know, but in this moment, I'm going through something that is helping me to grow up, helping me to mature, helping me to understand that compassion doesn't always come with a smile face. Sometimes compassion is knowing when to say hell no and hell to the no, to the no, to the no, no. You know, understanding that compassion sometimes is tough love. Sometimes compassion means loving people from a distance. Sometimes compassion means loving myself more, right? Begin your day by stating that you have everything that you need, everything everything, everything, whether it's love, whether it's understanding, whether it's knowledge. And I promise you guys, this is something I'm using in real time. And I want to go as far as to say, declare what you want and stay on your ground. So people are not getting away with anything right now. And you don't have to check people on their morals because people know when they're doing crappy stuff. But what you can do in this season is set your boundaries and stand your ground in your boundaries and reinforce them. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, if you don't do that, woe is you. Because standing your ground means standing your ground mentally, standing your ground emotionally, standing your ground in your actions, you understand, to produce your physical, you know, reality. You know, on my last call, which was two weeks ago, you know, Kim was talking about declaring, you know, not, not just like speaking it. And I think a lot of times people don't understand your words or spellings. You're casting spells with your words. You're casting spells. So just be mindful of what you're casting with your words, making sure that your words, your thoughts, and your 
emotions aligning up with your actions. How energetically, mentally, emotionally, and physically, you have, you sown, you got to reap from that ground. So the question is, what are we doing right now with our energy? So begin your day by declaring what type of ground you're planting in. What type of ground are you planting in, right? And what are you planting in your ground? Like, seriously, what conversations are you having at night with people before you go to bed? What, what are you listening to the first thing you wake up in the morning? Who are you listening to? Who do you call when you're going through some stuff? Who are you picking up that phone to call? All of this stuff matters because people are planted into your mind and into your heart space, right? And I just told us that that's the compass. That's the true brain, right? So who's controlling that part of you? I always talk about who is your emotional puppet? Who's controlling you emotionally? Who has that, that much control? It shouldn't be anybody else but you. When someone else's opinion becomes more important to you than your opinion about yourself, you have a problem. That means that you have not done your shadow work. You have not tapped into that inner child, okay? That means that you can become that person's emotional puppet and mental puppet, which means that you're always gonna be in a space of lack of want, of need, not ever being enough, always doubting yourself. And we don't have to live like that. So I say declare, declare, wake up and declare and pay attention to what ground you're sowing your season. Pay attention to who you're spending your conversation with. All of that stuff is important. Uh, and I'm gonna use. Yeah, so the accountability, yeah, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. The accountability, uh, what, uh, Prophetess Kamoya speaking on goes way back to um, prayers that were prayed against others and not for ourselves. One of the most powerful things that I learned about 25 years ago was spirit telling me more prayer, more power, pray for yourself. We were taught to pray against others like P-R-E-Y. We never got the accountability of understanding that we were our own taskmasters. And to overcome our own task mastery, we would have to pray for ourselves, which switches the whole game. The game changer comes in when you are responsible for the choices that you made. That's when you start growing up. That's what I hear today. When you and I start growing up, we start taking accountability from the beginning of our lives, which is where the shadow started. We were in the shadow phase from the beginning. Our lives were created for a reason. What I find working with people is, is that accountability is thrown out the door. Until you get accountable for you, you have no power. So how can you pray? How could you even pray for someone to be uh, removed from your life that's hurting you? It's just not possible. The power that we have is within ourselves. And yes, it's in the heart, but I, I bring the declaration. And what she's saying, you gotta be face forward. They begin five o'clock stating who you are, where you're going, not predicated on what someone else is doing and how they're saying it. Different intervals of your life, the pain, the suffering that you go through is under construction of your word, your words. But many people from the beginning of the church, that's why I teach, you know, a lot of people have told me, you don't have to tell this and you don't, I've had so much that people have said, you don't have to do. I will fill in the gap. I will not be the bridge that you cross for the rest of your life, but I will fill in the gap. I do recognize when people are not serious about it. They want to whine and complain why they can't get there. Well, listen, if I got there and it's 10 of us on here that got there, then the rest of everybody else can get there. You get there by, as she just said, you're gonna be with people that are accountable to their spiritual quest. You're going to take accountability that somewhere down along the line, you've been going through hell ever since you came in this world. Somebody can turn it around, but ain't nobody but you going to turn that around because you went through the dark night from the shadow part of you coming in this world. The next thing is when you change it, it is changed. It's changed by your word that Jesus Christ is in you. Ain't no Jesus Christ other than yourself. 
So if you put the word on it, whatever it is, that's when it changes. Pharaoh could dictate because he was at the top. Where are you at in your life? If you give man power continuously over your life, then you stay under the foot of man. You know, this, this video I did yesterday on Pluto coming back in, he says, I give you the power to tread down lion, adder, and serpent. And here we have brothers and sisters praying this against us. We can never get up because we're praying against each other. And karma is steadily going around because I am praying to hurt someone. When I pull myself out of the game, then I begin to pray for myself. And I realize that I have been a victim to circumstances that someone has taught me. I undo it. The 12th house, I undo it. So as long as you find yourself, if you can't find yourself uh, in a place where you hear yourself, like Kamoy said, you got to hear what's coming out of your mouth. Everything that I'm saying right now is unto productivity. You loose yourself from the binds that chain or the chains that bind you. You loose in heaven, you loose in earth. You lose your tongue from speaking against yourself and others, but you find that you've been speaking against others, so how could you be true to yourself first? Because we want to be who God created us to be. I'm not stepping on nobody's uh, show tonight, I'm telling you. It ain't a game for, game for people that play in games. It's a game for the people that's changing the game. I didn't see too many leaders playing the game of leadership, but nobody else was getting wealthy. Because wealth is inside of you. We are leaders that teach about wealth. If your friends are your foes, then you let your foes go. And you realize that God showed you that they're they're foes. You either grow up or you go down with them. Grow up or grow down. And it is. I heard you describing the boss up. You know, there's a lot of changes that's going on and people don't realize the change is going on for them, especially the one that's planted seed. What does that mean? What seeds have you planted? Look at the seeds that you planted even over the last 18 months and you can know that your harvest is going to be fresh. But if you can't say to yourself that you've done unto to man or woman good, then your harvest can't be because you know what you've given. You come to the place, yes, when you stop waiting on somebody to tell you that you planted good. Hey, you know what your garden look like. Because when I hear the victim mentality, I can't do it. I ain't judging nobody, but I'm telling you, ain't nothing to fear, but fear itself, false reality appearing real. I have the patience to work with you, but if you keep declaring what is not there, then you're not changing your language. That tells me that you're not changing your environment. You are the power. Change your language. Change it within you. When you start talking about you and you repeatedly, you purposely be that, things will change, amen? Mm. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Power up. Let me know when you finish and then I will send this over to you all. You guys can go on if you have anything else to add. No, this was a powerful um, call as usual. Thank you, Nod. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. I Thank, you. Thank you all. I appreciate you. All right, guess we're done. Yeah, I think Kim's call is, um, oh, she, 
Yeah, I think, you know, she's having some technical difficulties. Oh, okay. We're going to just wait for her to jump back on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bed early tonight. (laughs) I'm here. I'm waiting on y'all. I've said enough. God bless. Uh, Okay. Okay. I don't 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 have anything to say. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) This is a powerful call as usual. Thank you, everybody. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. Bye, Bye. honey. Love you guys.